Welcome to Rocket League Central. This is, of course, still the at-home edition of it. I'm Brody Leaf Exmoor, and I'm here to keep you up to date with everything Rocket League. We have all the same good good here today. We're going to get you primed up for that Intel World Open in Gridwatch. Double Tank is going to take a dive into Myst's career. And, of course, we got all the stuff you like from the community in Breakout. Before we dive into that stuff, though, check this out. Check this out. The McLaren 570S is back. And this time you can get it in silver. It's going to cost you 2,000 credits. Uh, and you can buy the whole pack with that. And it comes jam-packed with a bunch of stuff. Let's see. We got uh, the unique engine audio, a silver-painted decal, of course, as I mentioned. McLaren wheels and three different player banners. Also available is the McLaren 570S upgrade pack for only 900 credits. You know, measly easy. Start chucking it out your wallet. Which opens up the silver-painted decal and wheels for previous McLaren owners. So if you wanted them, now you can get them. You don't have to buy the whole pack. Pretty cool. The pack, though, is only available until June 2nd. That's tomorrow. So if you want it, you better hurry. All right, we got you caught up with that now because that was urgent. Let's get you all primed up for the Intel World Open in Gridwatch. <laughs> It's finally here. The International Rocket League event more than a year in the making. The much anticipated Intel World Open is now upon us. Finally, teams from all over the globe will have a chance to represent their countries in a massive competition to decide who's truly the best of the best in their respective regions. But the way it works is a little complicated. So here's the rundown for you. Players will form teams to represent 21 different countries and territories worldwide, meaning international teams will be split up, forcing them to form allegiances with their rivals turned countrymen. These teams will compete in one of the two open qualifiers taking place in the first two weeks of June. Best of three double elimination tournaments. The four winning teams from each country and territory will move on to the closed qualifiers later in June, which retain the double elimination format but are played in best of five sets rather than best of three. Once the field has been narrowed to just a single victorious team from each country or territory, the final stage begins. Mid-July's regional finals, which will consist of a round-robin bracket followed by playoffs to crown the four regional world champions. But let's return to one of those rules for a moment. Unlike RLCS rules, teams will be determined by player nationality rather than their org's nationality, meaning many superstar squads will be scattered to the winds, forcing their members to adapt to all new teammates and strategies. Yeah, that's a really good try though by BDS. I mean, they're always keeping the ball cam on every time that they're uh, ahead of the play. They've got their eye on the ball. Look at this again in the final third. BDS with surgical precision are shredding Dignitas. That's not an angle you should be allowed to shoot from. One of the teams most affected by this format is BDS, the most recent RLCS regional champs for Europe. BDS is marked by 8 and Monkey Moon are playing for Spain and France respectively, whereas third teammate Extra has yet to sign up as of time of writing. The former two are in good company. However, Monkey Moon is joined by top blokes Casio and train hard esports Exotic, and marked by 8 has teamed up with Itachi and Stake of Vodafone Giants fame. While the two teams will compete in separate qualifiers, there's still a chance for the BDS Conquerors to eventually face each other in the regional finals to prove who's truly the strongest member of Europe's strongest team. Great first touch. Looks to keep himself going. Second one sort of let him down a little bit. Kept the ball away from his car so he couldn't force the challenge. Just under two minutes now left on the clock and Dignitas again. Don't look comfortable. They can't escape. Two goals down. Vitality are rolling their way to the Spring Series Championship. Speaking of Europe, however, one of the most promising teams is one which managed to sidestep being broken up. The Holy French, Team Vitality, featuring All-Stars Fairy Peak, KDOP, and Alpha 54. By now, the lineups had more than a year of practice to get used to their synergy and teamwork, putting them at a distinct advantage versus the newly formed teams who faced the Herculean task of coming together in a short amount of time without even being able to meet face to face. You do not want to play in that corner, but they all get caught up in it. Yeah. Atomic slips it back around, missed the shot, denied, but too committed. And Turbo's going to have a free look. He pops it off the ceiling, back over to Atomic. Atomic on the catch, taken away by Justin, but Atomic's still behind it. Oh, Works man. his way around. Oh, he got him. Turbo pulls up. <laughs> Atomic 
puts it up on a golden platter and Envy take the game! Another powerful team that shares the same advantage is the US's team Envy, one of North America's top contenders in the RLCS's most recent season. Consisting of Atomic, Mist, and four-time world champion Turbo Pulsa, Envy is likely in a good position to sweep the rest of the region while the other teams are still finding their footing, though they've got stiffer competition than most, as some of their fellow American squads are truly stacked. Among the other top competitors are the trios of Garrett G, First Killer, and Chicago, AJ, Turinturo, and Alraz, and Kronovi, Astro, and Aeon. The US is home to some of the best individual players in the world, so their team potential is only reliant on how well they come together on the day. This was the scoreline in game three. Cloud9, unable to take it, but Squishy now with the <laughs> daily shot, he puts it through! He's been going for this stuff all season, and he pulls it off here in the most clutch moments. The player to invent the shot himself is able to get the delayed front flip and just destroy Method on defense, even they have to be impressed. Incredible showcase from Squishy. Absolute obliteration, and if you look over at Squishy on the stage, he's still just stone cold killer. <laughs> To the north comes yet more fierce opposition, as Canada's pool of talent is comparable to their Yankee counterparts. At the forefront of the Canuck competition is a dream team of JNAP, Squishy Muffins, and Illusion, two decorated champs and a very solid third, all players who could be poised to sweep unprepared foes off their feet. In Australia, regional champs Ground Zero Gaming managed to stick together, making them the likely pick to make it out of their qualifiers unscathed. Similarly, Brazil's Furia Esports, one of South America's top teams, remain a unit, giving them a chance to get their revenge against the Argentine True Neutral. Trinity, who has been spread across two squads. Two of the greatest X-Factors in the tournament are the teams representing the Middle East and mainland Asia. While players from these regions are untested against the majority of Rocket League's legends and mainstays, this unpredictability could also be a powerful asset. RLCS veterans know each other's strategies and habits well by this point. They'd best do their research on the rising stars from Asia, as failure to adapt quickly could mean the difference between victory and an upset defeat from their underdog foes. This is it. This is their APL National Lives in Line. It's going to be has the flick ready. We've seen that move before. Deja vu. That's how he's got a couple of his goals. It's going to be Abs Crazy. It's going to be it. And it will. 17 seconds to go. And Abs Crazy could have just gotten the game deciding, the series deciding goal for Redundant. The open qualifiers kick off on June 1st and continue until the 13th, so be sure to tune in and follow along so you can cheer for your favorite team. Many will enter, but only four will win. The competition's never been tighter nor fresher than it is now. Now joining me on the line, it's RLCS caster, content creator, and 1v1 overseer. It's John McDonald, aka Johnny Boy. Thanks for joining me, man. Hey, thank you for having me. It's, uh, I think that's the first time I've ever been introduced by my actual name in, uh, in oh, Rocket yeah. League. So <laughs> it, that was it nice. feels weird, eh? Very weird, yeah, but I, I kind of like the good weird. weird yeah, good yeah. Way. There you go. Uh, well, I want to talk about one of your accolades there. It's the you've become, <laughs> in the Rocket League world, the 1v1 guy like you for years now you've just taken over that scene and let uh, your platform be the showcase for that world and those players and and recently you've been doing a series called smug um, yeah. where you're pitting uh, a bunch of fun personalities or even uh, you know great players against each other to see who wins in a 1v1 Can you just talk to me about that like off the bat like where did that idea come from and just how it's been going recently well, the, the initial idea was something we worked on with Psyonix directly. Mm. Um, we, know, we, we were looking at Rocket League Esports as a whole and just how packed it is. It didn't really make sense to put in another tournament from player's point of view or from fan's point of view because it would just be too much. But these like one-off mm. events, it's a lot easier for a professional player uh, in particular to play a series than it is to play a, a tournament. So that's where the idea kind mm. of stemmed from. We're more likely to get better matches if we just do show matches in a, um, in a in an event. And I mean, show matches is kind of what 1v1's always been uh, since its beginning. And that's something I've, I've I've always wanted to do in Rocket League because nobody else was doing it in the beginning. Yeah. I loved that in other games. I, I, I used to watch uh, competitive StarCraft a lot, which is 1v1 in the esports uh, mm -hmm. uh, side. So that's where really the inspiration came from. I just wanted to see what it would look like in, in Rocket League. Um, and yeah, it, it still to this day is pretty show match um, focus. Yeah, and it, and it seems, especially with the smug stuff that's going well, I always have people coming into my chat if I'm ever streaming and like, hey, did you see this match? You see this match? Even with, not even just the best players, with the content creators that you've got yeah. on there too. <laughs> uh, you know, so it seems, it seems like the reception has been pretty good for this series. Yeah, it's been it's been pretty mind-blowing. Um, yeah, we, we had high hopes for what we could do with this. 
um, event. We were really excited about it, but to see it do as well as it did definitely was um, was pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, the the content creator inclusion again. We've got to um, thank Psyonix for that because that wouldn't have been possible without them. Um, to you know to have that kind of mashup yeah. of content matches and pro matches. Um, but yeah, it, it just gets a lot more eyes onto 1v1, gets a lot more eyes onto competitive Rocket League as well, because a lot of people, mm -hmm. I mean, the casual fan base for Rocket League is a lot bigger than the, the esports fan base, as evidenced by uh, the size that some YouTube channels yeah. are getting to these <laughs> days. Uh, but yeah, that was a really cool kind of collaboration, um, and we were really happy with how that went. Um, I've also got to say as well, I get, I mean, far too much credit. I really do appreciate when people, you know, thank me and show appreciation to me for my work over the years with 1v1 but when it comes to smug we had a I think a 17 or 18 uh, uh, person team behind the scenes lots of wow. video editors graphics guys lots of casters um, lots of guys running tournament ops so it was much more than just me and it would not have been possible we've got you know a dedicated broadcaster I think people can tell that's not Johnny running production here <laughs> that's yeah. not, not Johnny pushing the buttons so yeah, yeah. those guys really uh, they, I think they raised the bar for just Rocket League in general. Um, Rocket League uh, esports, you know, production value. Um, mm -hmm. It was it was a, new, a unique take on that, and that's not entirely to me down to me at all. That was, you know, I did help a lot with uh, the creative process and the, uh, the logistics, but um, the actual making of that and making it possible uh -huh. uh, was it was all the smug team. So they, they're the ones who d deserve the credit and and the praise, uh, not me. That's awesome, Johnny. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, Matt. this play this is impressive to have all that stop on the goal line but still set up another opportunity sure he wouldn't have been too impressed with me as Ixo off the backboard that's gonna be unchallenged and that's what? the reason why you challenge him Ixo sends white demons a message look at that first touch to the back wall he hits it as hard as he can Be a rebound chance. Flame off the corner. Cleared out by Monkey Moon. Mark will skip it all the way downfield. But Cassio controls it up. Over to Archie. Oh, oh my oh, god! <laughs> what on earth was this? Oh, he almost hit it down to the ground. And thank the heavens, Cassio was sitting there to scoop underneath. <laughs> job here of keeping G2 locked in and having multiple multiple chances. T Corral oh dribbling oh, and fire oh, everybody! T Corral! Grab the dog tags off G2! Call their loved ones, tell them they oh. didn't make it! T Corral! Oh, oh man! To the back wall, setting up Torsos, and there's another assist! Look at how they move up the field, Stacks. It's in one stroke. They don't stop. Ah, oh, hot shots. It always gets me lifted. And then there's breakout to keep me a little more on the ground. Mostly because it makes me realize how talented you guys are sometimes. And of course, Jacked Nerd is going to be a perfect example of that. He's got your IRL Rocket League Play of the Week. He went and made that. Now, at first I thought he had a, a, he needs that a little flipper in the bottom to get him to actually flip. I think he just rolled the ball in there, but that's so sick. That is honestly so cool. I love it when everyone like makes, they, that's an actual Merc. 
Don't tell James Bond. You're not going to own that for long. He will sneak in and take it. But next up, I want to keep our editions of that So Calculated going here. Mike Donaldson 2 has the perfect goal for it. Honestly, I would, I feel like that's replicatable, re replica, replicatable. You, someone could do it again on purpose. I want to see that in the RLCS. Now, moving on, Redditness Dude makes an incredible play. And honestly, I feel like could fit into that category of calculated as well. Sometimes you just got to go with the flow and you'll end up in the right spot. Way to make the most of that moment. That That is key recovery though, that's for sure. Now our next one comes from A.B. Bjorkster who says his platinum opponents are getting better and better. Okay, uh, Scott Sterling, anyone? I feel, I feel like we got a, the Scott Sterling of Rocket League. We just we just saw it right there. <laughs> Ridiculous. And of course, the forfeit right after. That's That makes sense for that rank as well. Accidentally queued ones, eh? Finally, though, our last post here comes from Arc0369. Nice. And they say they need to credit Heimdall for this one. That is the coolest bug we've seen. That, that What you're seeing there is the, usually you replace a bot, but the bot was invisible in that replay because of a recent uh, patch that caused the bug. That, I want that bug to stay though. That was that was great. <laughs> the Bifrost in the assist on that one. But we're moving on because up next, we're taking a look at the career of Miss in Double Tap. Nick Mist Costello is probably best known nowadays for his continued excellent performance with Team Envy, the squad who won more regionals in the RLCS's 10th season than any other team in North America. But Mist didn't achieve greatness overnight. He's been making a name for himself for years, with the fruits of his determined labor reflected in the many impressive accomplishments he's made along the way. Mist got his start in the Rocket League community around 2017, running weekly cups and smaller events with his friends. His first major professional experience would come later in 2018 when he subbed for Rocket League rival series team Manhattan when one of their teammates was unable to play a game. Finds the rebound, Malakis looking for Mist. He found him, shot, goal, Manhattan with the lead. Oh, they're picking him apart now. Look at this pass from Malakis. He can shoot, but can he pass? He does. And look at the placement from Mist. Going low, seeing both defenders going high. Great, great offensive push from them. Just bad defense from the Magicians once again. That experience lit a fire within Mist, and by the time Season 7 rolled around the next year, he had formed his own rival series team, Birds and the Bees, also known as the Birds, featuring himself, Hoxer, and Roldiz. Birds were quick to make a strong impression, their powerful performance at a rival series play-in winning them a spot in the RLRS proper. After that, they were on Easy Street, breezing through the RLRS with a 7-0 streak to reach the coveted promotion playoffs. And they have looked dominant at times. And here in the back half of this series, definitely have. The clock ticks down, only five seconds left, just a formality at this point. But for RBG, it got that much harder for them in game five, a seventh goal, just for good measure for Birds and Bees, just to pad the stats. But well, it, it symbolizes their perfect season, Subi. Seven and O, oh, Birds and Bees do it over the season, and they do it here in their last game. They ran into a bit of a speed bump at the playoffs, however, in the form of fellow up-and-coming team, the Peeps, who dealt Birds their first loss of the season in the winner's finals. And you can see why they passed the eye test on the field, playing so well, gelling so well as a team. 
Reynolds has been such a great pickup for the peeps. The dam holds, the levy doesn't break, and the peeps are your new RLCS team in North America. They'll see them next season in RLCS season eight. And I nine. Could, I couldn't ten. <laughs> Maybe. You it, don't know. It would be impressive to stay <laughs> for a few seasons. Mist must have caught their eye, because as a couple months later, he would depart birds to join the peeps himself, playing alongside good friend Reynolds in several high profile competitions, including a huge first place finish at DreamHack Montreal and even dealing out a decisive defeat to the defending world champions Team Vitality in the process. This is not a dream. If you just tuned in, you are witnessing the biggest Cinderella story that we have ever seen. The Beeps have won DreamHack Montreal. It was Miss' highest profile win yet, and one which would kick off the most hectic phase of his career. Less than a month after their big dream hack win, the peeps were picked up by the Pittsburgh Knights, under whose banner Miss secured second place at the Season 8 North American Regionals. Down the field again. Couldn't find it. Gyro cut off the pass. The Pittsburgh Knights. As soon as this ball touches the ground, they will be waiting for the contender for the regional championships. The ball does touch the ground. Wow, what a performance from this team. They are on fire today and it shows. Mist was released from his contract with the Knights following a disappointing performance at LAN, which led him to switching teams again to Ghost Gaming. Though Ghost would earn a spot in the ill-fated Season 9 World Championship, Mist was moved to the inactive roster mere days later before departing to form Vanguard. It wouldn't be long until Vanguard was acquired by Team Envy, the org that he presently calls home. The rest, as they say, is history. Envy consistently placed in the top two teams in North America for the entirety of Season X, winning the most events of any team Team in the region. Talk about a guy that just decided to win four games in a row. His name is Mist. <laughs> that guy could do no wrong in the bracket reset. Hand him the ball, tight angle, against defenders, with no defenders, it didn't matter. Dude was Did. putting it in the back of the net one way or the other. And Envy become back-to-back -back regional champs in the winner's split. How about it? Though it may be a while until Mist can once again put his skills to the test on the world stage, his present company makes the dream of winning a world championship more attainable than ever. Man, I remember when Mist left the peeps because he wanted to get up front a bit more, but then everyone realized he was such a smart player that they need him as their third man. He's finally getting to do what he wants to do though now, but I feel like he still gets overshadowed because he's got Turbo on the team. That whole team though, is just well put together with some incredibly, incredibly smart players. You are going to see Mist playing at the top level for quite some time. I don't think any caster has had any shadow of a doubt about Mist being at the top, and that's for good reason. So keep watching him because he'll be he'll be around for quite some time. But that is all the time we have for today. You can of course check out more of our content on YouTube and on Twitter at Squad State. Thank you guys so much for watching and for a little overtime action. Here's your weekly backfire.